Hello everybody, this is Code2J. Today I'm going to show you how to censor files in AWS S3 bucket. Sounds exciting? Let's get started. Censor is the special type of operator which waits for something to occur. It is a perfect tool for use cases in which you don't know exact when the data will be available. For example, your client will upload a CSV file to the AWS S3 bucket daily, but can be at any time in the day. You basically need to check whether it is uploaded at a certain time interval before starting other tasks like downloading or cleaning. For simplicity, in this tutorial, we will use a S3 compatible open source solution called Minio instead of AWS S3. Minio is API compatible with AWS S3 cloud storage service. If you know how to build ETL with Minio, you can easily apply it into AWS S3. Moreover, we can easily set up a Minio service in a Docker container. Let's go to the browser, search for its official website. Then we go to Docs. Click Legacy Documentation. Here we can find the Minio Docker Quick Start Guide. Let's click it and we can see the example Docker command to launch a Minio Docker container. Copy it. We then go back to our VS Code. Open a new terminal. Paste the command. The Docker command basically runs a Minio Docker image, exposing two ports, 9000 and 9001, and set up the root username and password. Let's hit enter to execute it. Once it is done, we can see the 9000 port is for the API, 9001 is for the console. Let's copy the console localhost URL and paste it in the browser. Then we can see a login page which requires us to input the, the root username and password. Let's copy them from the terminal and log in. Once logged in, we can see we have no S3 bucket. Let's create one by clicking the Create Bucket button. Let's name our bucket name Airflow. Then click Create Bucket and we can see the bucket Airflow we created. Make sure we have the read and write permission. Then we click the Browser button here, we can either create a path or upload a file. Let's go back to VS Code to generate a CSV file, which will be uploaded later to our Airflow bucket. Let's first create a folder called data in our root project directory. Then we create a CSV file called data.csv with two columns product ID delivery DT with some rows just for demonstration. Okay, save it and go back to the browser to drag the file from the folder to our Airflow bucket. Once uploaded successfully, we see the data.csv file exists in our Airflow bucket. Now we have a proper S3 bucket set up. Let's start building an Airflow DAG to connect to our S3 bucket and sense the file's existence. We first create a Python file called DAG with menu s3.py and open it. We need to import the necessary Python packages. Then we create the default arcs variable. After that, 
we initialize the DAG with a proper DAG ID, start date, and at daily schedule interval. Next, we need to create a task using the S3 sensor operator. Since Menu is S3 API compatible, to connect to our Menu bucket, we can use the AWS S3 API, which is included in the Airflow Amazon Providers packages. Let's first make sure which version of the Amazon Airflow Provider package we installed it. Let's open our Docker Compose YAML file to change the Airflow image back to the latest extending Airflow or official Apache Airflow version 2.0.1. If you don't know how to extend the Airflow Docker images yet, let's check out my last video about that. Don't forget to recreate the Airflow web server and schedule by the command docker compose up minus d node depends build Airflow web server and Airflow scheduler. Then we find and copy the container ID of the Airflow scheduler by command docker ps. After that, we enter into the Airflow scheduler container by command docker exec minus id with the copied container id bash. On the left, we can see Airflow add container id, which means we are inside of the container. Let's run command pip list pipe rip amazon. The output shows we have an Airflow Amazon provider package with version 1.1.0 installed it. That's great! Let's go to the browser and search for the Apache Airflow official documentation site. Here, below the Providers section, click the Amazon. On the top left, we change version to 1.1.0 to match our local installation. Then we check the Python API, look for sensor S3. We found airflow.providers.amazon.aws.sensors.s3 key and click it. Here we found the S3 key sensor, which says wait for a key, a file-like instance on S3 to be present in a S3 bucket. That's what we need exactly. To use it, we need a couple of parameters like bucket name, bucket key, AWS connection ID, etc. Let's copy the package directory and go back to VS Code to paste it. We basically need to import the S3 key sensor operator from the package directory. Let's build our task using the S3 key sensor. We set the task ID to sensor menu S3. Bucket name is Airflow. Bucket key is the file we want to sensor, which is data.csv. Then we need to set up an AWS S3 connection ID. Let's go to the Airflow UI from the admin connections. Click the plus button to add one. We set the menu connection as the connection ID name. For the connection type, we need to select a three. Then we only need to write a dictionary in the extra field, which consists of the AWS access key ID, AWS secret access key, and host. Access key is the menu root username, and the secret key is the menu root password. Host is HTTP host.docker.internal with port 9000. Host.docker.internal is the local host since we are using Mac Docker desktop. 9000 is the port menu expose for the API connection. Save it. We then go back to VS Code to set our newly created S3 connection ID name to the AWS connection ID parameter. Save the DAG file, then we go to the Airflow web server. 
pick our newly created DAG and start it. Oops, the task fails. Let's open the log. It says expecting property name enclosed in double quotes. OK, let's update our connection extra field from single quotes into double quotes. Clear the task and refresh. We can see the DAG run succeeded. Let's check the log. From the log, we can see it was checking the data.csv file existence in our Airflow S3 bucket using mode POCking. POC is the default mode for sensor operators. Basically, it checks the file's existence at every POC interval as long as it is within the timeout limit. Since the data.csv already exists in the Airflow bucket, it finishes immediately after the first pocking and it's marked as success. Let's go back to VS Code. Change the POC interval to 5 seconds and time out to 30 seconds. Update the DAG version and save it. Then we delete the data.csv from our Airflow bucket. Let's pick the newest DAG and start the sensor task again. Open the log and refresh a couple of times, roughly every 5 seconds. We can see from the log, every 5 seconds it will poke the file until timeout and fails. Because it didn't find the data.csv file within the 30 seconds time limit in the Airflow bucket. What if the data.csv is uploaded during the poking? Let's clear and rerun the sensor task. This time, we will wait for some seconds and upload the file to our Airflow bucket before timeout. We open the log and see it is already parking the file. Let's open the menu console to upload the CSV file. OK, it is uploaded. Let's check the sensor task run. Boom! It parked the file's existence right after we uploaded it. Then, its task run was marked successful. That's it! You have learned how to sensor files in the AWS S3 bucket using Airflow. With the same logic, you can easily apply it to other storage cloud services like GCP, Azure, and etc. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section. And last but not least, which Airflow topics do you want to see in the next video? Please comment below. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.